So, so here we go. Oh, sorry, here he is. You guys didn't see that. <laughs> So good afternoon, everyone. Um, today we'll be discussing rap narratives of formative experiences that performers portray as traumatic from an advanced perspective on the positions of victim and perpetrator in rap music. I will be analyzing two songs, Coolio's 99.5 hit song, Gangsta's Paradise, you might know this one, and Kendrick Lamar's 2015 song, The Black Heart Berry. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, these are two examples of narratives in which the victim and perpetrator are positions that oversimplify the ways in which trauma can be experienced. These are testimonies of men who have witnessed extreme violence, but also have taken part in it. So they recognize in their writing, in their rap songs, how greater societal struggles with racism have motivated their interactions with gang violence. Oh, sorry. So music, according to Angela Davis, has always been a form of resistance employed by black communities around the globe used to create an aesthetic community which uh, nurtured activist struggle for freedom. I'm paraphrasing her, but the quote uh, is in my presentation. Rap, in this sense, similarly functions as a testimony of this struggle. Rap music has always been um, based in protest and acknowledging the specific struggles experienced in, within the black community. Shoshana Feldman argues that producing and sharing testimony helps people realize that their experiences matter. When she asked her students to produce testimonies of a traumatizing event they had witnessed in class, she found that the result was amazingly artic articulate, reflective, and profound statements of the trauma they had gone through. So this is the lenses through which I will be looking at rap music as testimony that makes sense of experiences, particularly as embodied by a young black man within uh, communities that are that have been connected through rap music. What I argue is that the complex rhyming schemes and the rich set of references that form rap as a genre, uh, these, these characteristics allow for uh, creation of spaces uh, in which Black people develop critiques that offer alternatives to the status quo. Here I'm quoting Last Spence. And I have added some examples of rap music, that, of rap songs actually, that describe struggles experienced by these men. Um, there is a famous line by Ron DMC, which is a very famous rap band, uh, which is, I'll say it in a rap, because I do not sing. This line means certain things are rap music only. Only rap music can properly convey these experiences. That is what Ron DMC are getting at. Repetition is something you can identify in rap music, particularly in, raps, uh, in rap lyrics, uh, which <laughs> I understand that writing about music is a little bit like dancing about architecture in the sense that many of the things that make rap striking as a form of expression, you have to, of course, be listening to the music, but lyrically it offers um, a lot of um, particular particularities that are very interesting for us to understand trauma and coping. So Kathy Kareth characterizes trauma as a mental wound caused by an event that is experienced too soon, too unexpectedly to be fully known. This repetition she gets at is uh, very easy to see amongst uh, rap music in general. So I have collected some uh, specific examples of how this repetition can manifest. It could be through recollection. Uh, the songs I have used are examples of how their, these rappers' childhood and adolescence was influenced by growing up in the projects, being discredited by white teachers, living through the beginning of the crack epidemic, being racially profiled. That's the Jay-Z song that he describes the case of being racially profiled by a police officer. Coolio's song is a bit different than these others because he's describing a violence that he has caused as well as been victimized by. This position is what Ma Michael Rothbard calls an implicated subject, someone who is folded into events that seem beyond our control as individual subjects. So we might be less actively involved in a perpetrator, but at the same time, not exactly a victim because it, we are part of a bigger system. That's what we're getting at here. And Coolio identifies that just as Lamar does in his music. So uh, Coolio particularly is talking about how his position of power in gangs seems attractive to the youth because he can get to buy things he couldn't before or he looks dangerous like a gangster. But he's talking about in his song how he has um, 
how these have taken an extreme toll in his mind. So here we see he's, he's talking about uh, blasting and laughing. So he's been killing and having fun for so long that his mother even considers him to be turning crazy uh, with the gang violence. And he himself is talking about how much uh, attention you have to have on a daily basis because you better watch where you go, who you talk to, because you may be killed. That is the extent of violence he's subjected to every day in his life. And Lamar talks about that, but from a different perspective, in the sense that he's been through so much violence that seeing other people, especially racists, um, who experience violence is something that not only he's desensitized to, but he actually takes pleasure in witnessing. Because according to him, you made me. The experiences of racism he's been subjected to throughout his life have made him um, desensitized not only to violence, but actually um, prone to, um, how can I put this? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I have notes here. Um, but also, uh, he's become almost vengeful in seeing these events uh, unfold to other people, people who have done this to him instead. Uh, Kulu describes a moment when he shoots someone and he sees himself in the pistol smoke. He sees his reflection. This is a repetition of what has been done to him because he was raised by the street. He was raised by television promising him things that were not accessible to him as a young black child in the projects. And Lamar talks about that too, how he has become emancipated by this violence that was caused by a racist society in which he was brought up. Uh, Coolio and Lamar, incidentally, I, I do not know whether they know each other, but they were part of the same gang in Compton and they both referenced this gang and uh, its traditions and, and um, slang terms in these in both of these songs. They are separated by 20 years, but not a lot has changed in terms of slangs, slangs uh, words at least. Most importantly, Lamar identifies a plot bigger than him, a generation, generational hatred. Uh, he talks about over-incarceration, uh, disproportionately high incarceration rates of black youth, and how the ways that gangs are, um, he puts that uh, as a, situation in which these different gangs are forced to battle each other, much like a war situation that white people, racist white people have been um, causing these communities to go through. So he's very clearly here uh, demanding that white people um, admit to how we have become complicit in his desensitization of violence. And Coolio shows examples of that. At the time he wrote the song, he was 23, and he had no idea whether he would live to see 24. And these are the types of experiences they're getting at here that are extremely violent and in which they have become subjects, but not subjects that have freely decided to commit violence, but rather were pressured or taken to through, uh, by means that they, um, they identify as a bigger plot, a bigger racist plot to um, subject Black people to um, more trauma. Uh, and he points that as being a generation issue. Uh, this is uh, some participation. The songs have featurings, and they also point to that in a conversation with other songs. So you've got Tupac, for instance, who also identified how we hurt, uh, the ones we hurt are you and me, designed by LV in Coolio's song. But Tupac also has a similar line. So there's a conversation in black music, and in, in rap particularly, in which they reference each other to discuss these experiences and to pose these experiences as traumatic events that are not simple. They are not just a matter of being victimized or causing violence, but rather these systems, the racist system and uh, the white supremacy they're subjected to uh, have caused their communities to have these issues. Um, and uh, the authenticity is an important part here because uh, Imani Perry identifies in rap music, a degree of authenticity that strengthens this cathartic relationship with the listener. So the keep it real model that is prevalent in rap music aims to show other, other members of the community that we too share these experiences and points at ways. So Lamar is talking about his community and so is Coolio, incidentally. Uh, most importantly, I think, is that Lamar and Coolio testify about their implicated uh, position as men who took part in the same violence that traumatized them 
And now they're repeating their stories and listening to other stories in a bigger conversation that exposed racism as an open wound in the United States. Um, here's my work cited list and thank you very much.